So welcome guys, we're going to finish the second portion of chapter three. Just so I kind of tell you what we have gone over. Um, last week, we went through the beginning part of um, the end of the accounting cycle where we spent a lot of time understanding the difference between the accrual basis of accounting versus the cash basis of accounting. And we talked about, we record revenue when we've earned it, when we provided the goods and services, not necessarily when we get the cash. And we record the expenses to match the revenues they help to create. And so we spent time talking about that. And as a result of this accrual based of accounting, we understand that sometimes after the end of the period, we need to create some journal entries. So we adjusting journal entries so we can accurately depict what has happened. So there are sometimes prepaid at prepaid expenses, which we call an asset that we need to show may be used up during the period. So if we had prepaid rent or prepaid insurance, we have to look and see, hey, how much of that has been used up just due to the passage of time and make a court appropriate entries. Sometimes we take um, revenue that was unearned, which means we may have received the cash prior to us doing the work, which is a deferred revenue. And some of that revenue may have been earned. So we need to look at the journal entries or our books and adjust those um, items that have internally been worked on. There are also times that we need to record expenses that have incurred even though we haven't paid it. And also there may be revenues. We have not um, sent invoices for yet, but we have done the work. So we've talked about all these various adjusting journal entries we need to prepare prior to creating our financial statements. So the process of this accounting cycle, we started talking about analyzing transactions, looking at source documents, um, deciding what accounts are being affected, are they debited, are they credited? And then we prepared a trial balance, the, what we called an unadjusted trial balance, and then we went through various journal, adjusting journal entries to understand what we need to adjust in order to then have ultimately an adjusted trial balance. This adjusted trial balance is what we are going to utilize to prepare our financial statements. The financial statements are the focus of what we're gonna be talking about today in this class. The financial statements are our method of communicating to the end user information about a company. So as you see on this slide, are you guys able to see my slide? I should be sharing it. I just want to make sure I'm doing it. We see it. Thank you. So the first statement we will always prepare will be the income statement. Over here on the left-hand side, you will see the adjusted trial balance. The first thing we will do is prepare the income statement. The income statement shows our revenues and our expenses. The revenues and the expenses are what we will take from this adjusted trial balance 
to prepare our income statement. After we prepare our income statement, we will then use information from our income statement in order to then prepare our statement of stockholders equity. Because we need our income statement in order to add into the retained earnings. So <coughs> here is Eagle Golf's Academy adjusted trial balance. This adjusted trial balance gives us the updated figures of all of the accounts. Down here, where it begins with revenues through expenses, these we call temporary accounts that will close out at the end of the period. That is what we use to produce our income statement. So the statement of stockholders equity is then taken from our common stock, our retained earnings, and our dividends here, along with what we gathered from our net income from our income statement. Then, as you see, all of the green will give us our balance sheet items. Our balance sheet items, along with the information we get from the statement of stockholders equity, total our balance sheet. So we'll start with our income statement. We will then create our statement of stockholders equity, and then we will create our balance sheet. <coughs> Here you see the first statement we will do is the income statement. You see here, we show our revenues and we show our expenses. Our revenues, we show um, the only revenue we had, service revenue. We show our different expenses to come up with net income of $1,200. From there, we take the information of our common stock, our income statement, shows our net income. We use our, utilize our dividends here to come up with our statement of stockholders equity. Then we show our balance sheet, our assets for liabilities, but our stockholders equity portion comes from the ending balances on the statement of stockholders equity, okay? We have, and we discussed this initially, what we call a statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows measures activities that only involve cash receipts and cash payments. And we break them into the various activities, the operating, investing, and the financing activities of a company. Now to start, which financial statement would include a line for net income? Would it be the income statement? Would it be the statement of stockholders equity? Would it be the balance sheet? Or both A and B? Would it be the statement of stockholders equity? That's one. That does have a line for net income. Anyone else? A and, B. A and B. It would include the income statement has a line for net income and the statement of stockholders equity has a line for net income. 
Now, Jesse, I don't know if you can hear me, but I've allowed you in this, um, Jesse, I've allowed you in this Zoom meeting three times now. I'm not gonna do it anymore. So once you're in, stay in. Okay, so. Hey guys, another thing. Right now it is 1213 and you're coming in the classroom. Um, if you can't be respectful and try to get in right at noon, I'm going to start cutting it out too because it's just rude. Um, please make an effort to be on time. The class begins at noon. And I, again, I'm not trying to be a bitch, but if, um, if you want to participate in this Zoom class, be respectful and get here on time. Every time I have to let you in, it's annoying and it affects all of us. So from here on out, no more. And when you come into class, I should be able to let you in one time, not three times. <laughs> Moving on. Now, we are going to prepare financial statements. And actually what I'd like to do right now is let's do a problem that shows us how we go about preparing the financial statements. So, so let's go in here and let's find a problem. So let me just do one of our homeworks, okay? So let's say we start with um, this homework. Here you see Boilermaker Unlimited specializes in building new homes and remodeling existing homes. Remodeling projects include adding game rooms, changing kitchen cabinets and countertops, and updating bathrooms. Below is the year. Someone's um, not muted. Can you make sure you've muted your um, your um, speakers, please? Thank you, guys. Below is the year in adjusted trial balance of Boilermaker Unlimited. One second here. Okay. So here we see the revenues and the expenses that will make up our income statement. We see the items that will make up our statement of stockholders equity. And then we see the items that will make up our balance sheet. Okay. We are required to prepare an income statement. Then we'll prepare a statement of stockholders equity for the year. And then it gives us some information that says, note that during the year, the company issued additional common stock of 330,000. This amount is included in the amount for common stock in the adjusted trial balance. Then we're gonna prepare a balance sheet. So I'm going to get these going for you. One second. Hey, Jim. 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 Okay, sorry about that. So the first thing we're going to do is look to create an income statement. What we're going to do is we're going to begin with our revenues and we're going to take our expenses. That's all that is a part of the income statement. So we'll start, as you see here, we have two revenues. 
We have service revenue for new construction and service revenue for remodeling. So we'll take service revenue, new construction, and service revenue for remodeling. We've got new construction 450, remodeling 280. Okay. Then we will look at our expenses. Here we've got our salaries expense, supplies expense, depreciation expense, insurance expense, utilities expense, interest expense, and service fees expense. So I'm going to start with salaries, supplies, depreciation. Salaries, supplies, depreciation, insurance, utilities, interest. I hope you guys are seeing a commonality among all of these expenses. They all have the word expense in them. So make sure revenues include the word revenue, expenses include the word expense. 2542 Okay, and then the most important piece at the end is the word net income. Expense would also be deferred revenue if it was an option, correct? No. Deferred revenue is a liability account. Deferred revenue is when we've received cash up front for something we haven't completed yet. So deferred revenue is always a liability that takes place in the balance sheet. The Revenue will always have the word revenue. The expenses will always have the um, title expense after them. 730 minus 644 should be six. Uh, 86,000. 86,000. Thank you. So let's check our work. And we have it. Don't forget to show net income. That's an important piece in this because we're going to take this net income and use it for our statement of stockholders equity. Any questions in this statement before we move on to the statement of stockholders equity, guys? Okay, so I'll move on if you guys are okay with that. Now, the statement of stockholders equity. Prepare the statement of stockholders equity for the year ending December 31st, 2021. Note that during the year, the company issued additional common stock for 30,000. So what they're trying to tell me is that the amount that is shown um, um, add, 
common stock. Um, it it be Thank you. Thank you so much. So basically what they're telling me, guys, is this common stock figure of 200,000 includes the 30,000 that was issued during the period. So that means we started the year with 170,000 of common stock. We started the year with retained earnings of 31,000. Do you see that? 31,000. So we're gonna add that there. And our total stockholders equity will be 201,000. Issuance of common stock, we add our net income, right? Add net income of 86,000. And we subtract our dividends of up here, it will tell us the dividends were 26,000. So our dividends of 26,000, let me see if I have to do a minus. Um, should then give us our ending balances here. Uh, one seven. The balance would be two hundred thousand, not twenty thousand. Thank you. And is this one one ninety one? Thank you. And two ninety one. So again, guys, check your work. If you have problems and often don't get it right, it's because you're missing one of these items, add net income, less our dividends. Okay, now we need this bottom, the ending balances of common stock, retained earnings and total stockholders equity in order for us to complete our balance sheet. So we need to have in our stockholders equity, our common stock of 200,000. I think the retained earnings was 91. For um, the stockholders equity section there to be 291. Let me just make sure. Yes. Now, what we want to do I just went ahead and plugged that in since it was fresh with us. But how do we determine our assets and our long-term assets? Well, we're going to go up here. We're always going to start with our most liquid assets, which we also know are current assets. Our cash, accounts receivable, supplies, and prepaid insurance will be our current assets. 16, 25, 32. So we've got cash, we've got accounts receivable, 32, was that supplies? Supplies of 32 and prepaid insurance of 7,000 for our total current assets. We also will look to see our long-term assets. It looks like we've got equipment of 625,000 and this accumulated depreciation will offset our equipment. So our equipment, 625,000, less our accumulated depreciation, of 200,000 will give us 
our um, net here, accumulated depreciate equipment less accumulated depreciation. I do not believe I have any other assets up there. Next, we're going to take our current liabilities and then add our long-term liabilities. So we've got here accounts payable, salaries payable, utilities payable. So we'll do our accounts payable, our salaries payable, and our utilities payable. The totals are 31,000, 28,000, and 5,000. 31, 28, thank you so much, that helps. And then our long-term liability are debts that are due over a year. We have got um, a notes payable of 150,000, it's due in five years. So we will put in here notes payable of 150,000. So the key here are, are, do our assets of 505 equal our liabilities plus our stockholders equity? That's the key you wanna make sure you've got. Does that make sense, guys? Yep. Yes. Great. Any questions on financial statements before I move on? Okay. So we have created our financial statements. Now we need to close our book so we can start a new year. What we do when we close our books is we are going to get read or zero out our what we call temporary accounts. We are going to close out our income statement accounts, those that are on the income statement, our revenues and our expenses. We're going to close them out so we can start fresh. We will also close out our dividends. But closing enter, entries transfer all balances of the temporary accounts to the balance of retained earnings. To reduce the balance of these temporary accounts to zero so we start next period. So guys, think about what goes into retained earnings, our revenues, our expenses, and our dividends, don't they? Those are the accounts we're going to zero out. Because if you think about it, we've already put them into retained earnings by taking our net income and transferring it over to retained earnings on the statement of stockholders equity. So we know revenues have a normal credit balance. To close out revenues, we're going to zero it. To zero it out, we debit the whole amount and flow it into retained earnings. We do the same thing with all of our expenses. We know our expenses have a normal debit balance. So to close them out, we will credit them. We credit them all and debit that to retained earnings. And then we do the same thing with our dividends. Our dividends have a normal debit balance. So we're gonna credit those dividends to bring it over to retained earnings. What this does is it adjusts all of our temporary accounts to zero and flows them in to retained earnings. Sometimes students think that closing entries are meant to reduce the balance of retained earnings to zero. But no, retained earnings is a permanent account. Remember, that represents the accumulation or the culmination of all income minus dividends since the company has existed. <coughs> so here, let's look at this. <coughs> Oh, 
Oh, this is adjusting entries. We don't need to do that one. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Which account would not be closed during the closing process? We know we close revenues. We hey. know we close expenses and we know we close dividends, but we never close out retained earnings because that's a permanent account. It continues on. So the ending balance of one period is the beginning balance of the second period. Okay. Um, I don't know why I have these off kilter and I'm so sorry for that. So <clears throat> after we close out our revenues, our expenses, and our dividends, then we will prepare what we call a post-closing trial balance. Now, this post-closing trial balance, guess what, guys? It's got everything that's in the balance sheet. It doesn't have any temporary accounts. So the only accounts you're going to see are permanent accounts, assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. Because our revenues, our expenses, and our dividends have been closed out into retained earnings. Which of the following accounts would you find on a post-closing trial balance? B. B, it's going to be retained earnings. Dividends you're not going to have. Expenses you're not going to have and revenues you're not going to have. So you will see retained earnings on a post-closing trial balance. So let's look at this exercise. And you see here, this is just a partial adjusted trial balance. It doesn't have everything in it. But what we're trying to do is learn how to close out accounts. We are going to prepare the necessary closing entries and then ultimately calculate the ending balance of retained earnings. So if retained earnings prior to our closing balances has 30,000 in it, Let's go through and close out the accounts. The first thing we're going to close out is revenues. So we will take and debit our service revenue for 50,000, debit our interest revenue for 6,000, and we're going to credit that two retained earnings for 56,000. Okay, then we're going to zero out all the expenses. So if expenses have a normal debit balance, we're going to zero them out by crediting them. We're going to credit our salaries expense of 15, credit our rent expense of six, credit our advertising expense of three, credit our depreciation expense of 11, and credit our interest expense of five. 
those end up getting put into a debit to retained earnings, reducing our retained earnings by 40,000. Then we zero out our dividends account. Dividends have a normal debit balance. To reduce dividends, we credit it. So if retained earnings started with a credit of 30 and we took those adjusting or closing post-closing uh, journal entries we're crediting the revenue here for 56 we're debiting our expenses of 40 we're debiting our dividends of three and we'll end up with an ending balance in retained earnings of 43,000. Now I'm gonna let you guys try something here. Here is an adjusted trial balance. You see retained earnings is at 9,000 right here. I want you to take a minute and let me know what the ending balance will be of retained earnings when we close out the temporary accounts. So let me give you a couple minutes here, okay? Okay. Anyone want to give me an idea? I got 12,000, but I didn't I didn't do anything with this debit of 3,000 for retained earnings. I just left that out. Okay. So sure here, that. that's great. I mean, you're doing okay. Let me just, there is, so the, I think that's a screw up. I have three in there. I'm glad you ignored it because it should be, oh my gosh, this is a mess here. So the debit to of dividends was a 4,000 here. So we need to zero that out. I think I, that's a screw up here. Basically, we started with 9,000. 
we add the revenues of 54,000 from here, 54,000. We, we debit our expenses, which should be 33, 43, 51, right? 51. We debit our retained earnings of four. We should end up, if you ignore that 3,000, which you should, we should end up with a credit to retained earnings of $8,000. How many of you guys got that? I was a little bit off. Does it make sense though? I had I had all those I had all those same categories, but I think mine was a math error. Okay, that's you can deal with that. That's a good one, right? Okay, guys. Are we good? I'm, not gonna lie. I'm really confused by this. What do you mean? It doesn't make sense. I was I think this is part of number two on the assignment, and I was completely lost. I okay, don't know. Okay, so remember, if you look at the statement of stockholders' equity, we add our revenues into our retained earnings. They increase our revenues. We take our expenses and we reduce our retained earnings by our expenses because they take away from retained earnings along with dividends. So our retained earnings at the end of the period, we, we start with the beginning balance, we add our net income, and we subtract our dividends to come up with an ending balance in retained earnings. Basically, that's what we're doing here. We start with the beginning balance in retained earnings. We add our revenues. We, we debit our expenses, we debit our dividends, and this is our ending balance in retained earnings, which should be the same balance we show on our statement of stockholders equity. So let's go to that problem, okay? Let's look at number two. Do I have it right here, guys? Is this right? Yes. Okay, so basically it's telling us the following information applies to the questions displayed below. We've got our income statement. We've got our statement of stockholders equity and we've got our balance sheet. It asks us to record the year end closing entries. It wants us to cl close out the revenue accounts. We find the revenue account here in the income statement, 77,500. How do we close out revenue? Well, if it's got a normal credit balance, then that means we debit it. So we are going to debit our revenue account 77.5, and we credit retained earnings by 77.5, okay? Then we're going to record the entry to close the expense accounts. Since expenses have a normal debit balance, to close these expenses, we're going to credit them. Salaries, utilities, insurance, and sick payments. So we're going to 
46. Whoops, 82. Fifty-eight and twenty-one. So we should be sixty-two one. We want to close out all of our expense accounts to a debit in retained earnings. Okay. Then, if we had dividends, which we do, we're going to need to record um, to close out our dividend account, which uh, view journal entry worksheet. One, two, here it is. Close out the dividend account. We will debit our retained earnings and we will credit our dividends to record the closing of 6,000 of our dividends. We do that because when we start the next period, we want our revenues to start at zero. We want our expenses to start at zero and our dividends to start at zero. We don't say, oh, we've had, we've made 893,000 revenues for two years. We say, here's our revenues for the year. Okay. Does that make sense? It definitely makes more sense than it did before. Always helps when you get someone to help see it. It doesn't it? Okay. Now, the next thing says, now that we have done that, prepare a post-closing trial balance. Okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our post-closing, we're going to take our assets and we're going to show cash of 4,700. We're going to show accounts receivable of 7,200. We're going to show land of 115,000. We're going to show our accounts payable of 3,000. We're going to show our common stock of 90,000, right? Whoops. And our retained earnings. Should be 33.9. Do you see how we balance? Yep. The post closing trial balance will only consist of balance sheet accounts. You won't have any temporary accounts in your post closing trial balance. So let's look at this. Crimson Tide Music Academy offers lessons in playing a wide range of musical instruments. The unadjusted trial balance as of December 31st appears below, unadjusted. Then it tells us, in addition, the company had the following year end adjusting entries. So it tells us, Let's go ahead and put in the unadjusted balances. Cash, 
Accounts receivable, 9,500. Prepaid or supplies to prepaid rent, 7,200. Supplies, 2,000. Prepaid rent, 7,200. Land, 78,000. Notes receivable, 20. Accounts payable, 7,700. Deferred revenue, 5,300. Do you see how I need to know those are credit balances? Common stock, 79, retained earnings, 19.7. Service revenue, 42.2. Salaries expense, 24.5. Utilities expense, 2,400. Do you see what I did? I started by taking my balances in the unadjusted trial balance and I put them in here. Okay, then it tells me that I need to um, post these adjusting entries. These adjusting entries show me that there's a debit to salaries expense for 2100 What, what's it called? A or one? A, 2100. And the credit is to salaries payable for 2100. Okay. Are we good so far? So the salaries payable would also then be listed as A, right? Correct. Because do you see that is the adjusting journal entry A? Okay. I'll slow down, Jake. I'm sorry. B, adjusting entry B has a debit to interest receivable of 800. Okay. And the other adjusting entry is interest revenue for 800. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Interest receivable, debit, interest revenue, credit. So basically all this is is just finding where it goes and then putting in the adjusting or the number exactly. that it says. Exactly, okay. exactly. Next, C. Supplies expense, 1300. Credit supplies, 1300.
if we debit one, we have to credit the other, don't we? D, deferred revenue, 3,300. Service revenue, 3,300. E, rent expense, 5,400. Credit, prepaid rent, 5,400. F, utilities expense, 200. Utilities payable, 200. I'm going to start back up here so you can just look at what I've done. Tell me when I can slide it down because I want to let you guys capture this. You're still recording too, so that will be there too. I'll record this one and then I'll kind of quit or I'll um, quit recording. Thank you for telling me. After I turn off the recording, I'll do more of these with you guys. Unless you don't want me to. I thought you did it no, on purpose you. so we could look back at it later. I did. Actually, I did because it's so big. You can scroll down whenever. I don't know about okay. everybody else. Could you check the answers? Because I have all of that, but for some reason, it still says the answer isn't complete. Not yet, because we haven't probably finished. Okay. That's just one part of this. Okay, 
So let's see what I've done so far. Now, next step. Then it says, prepare an adjusted trial balance. Okay. So we're going to go back to what we've done and gather this information. Cash 10-3, accounts receivable 9,500. Cash, excuse me, wrong one. I thought it wanted us to do. You need it to, yeah, that's the one. Cash 10 3. Accounts receivable 9,500. Interest receivable is 800. Supplies would be uh, 700. Prepaid rent. Um, if you go and look here, prepaid rent is eighteen hundred. Land is seventy eight thousand. What did I say prepaid rent was? Seventeen hundred. I think it was 1800. 1800, sorry. Notes receivable 20,000. Notes receivable 20. Accounts payable didn't change. It's 7700. Salaries payable did 2100 and so salaries payables 2100 deferred revenue is 3300 so 2000 utilities payable is 200 i believe Um, common stock is 79,000. Retained earnings nineteen seven. Service revenue, 42, 33, 45, 5. Interest revenue, 800. Salaries expense, I can just go down here and look. Twenty six six rent is fifty four hundred. Supplies expense is thirteen hundred and utilities expense is twenty six hundred. Okay. I'll give you a minute, guys. Okay. This is a long problem.
me when you guys are ready to move on. Okay, can we move on? I'm good. Now, it asks us to create an income statement. We will create our income statement based on our adjusted trial balance. How do we do that? We start with our revenue of 45.5 and our interest revenue of 800. Okay, then we look at salaries, expense. Can someone remember 26, 6, 5,400, 1,300, and 2,600? Salaries, rent, supplies, utilities. Then we do salaries, rent, supplies and utilities, I think this was 1300 and this was 2600. And what were our salaries, guys? Oh, look, 12. I think that was 26. 26, 6, and 5400, okay? And then we have net income four zero ten thousand four hundred. Check our work. I'll keep this here a minute so you guys can just look. Uh, this is going to sound probably dumb, but it's separated left and right for like credit and debt. If it's negative, do we put it on, or positive, do we put it on the other side and then negative on the other side, or do we just what put do, a negative you, in front of the net income? For the net, for the income statement? Yeah, for the income statement. First of all, no question is too dumb. All I'm doing here. This is a total of here. 
Oh, I see now. I'm this sorry. is the total of here. Do not worry. Guys, this is all new to you. I'm maybe fast just because I've been doing this for 35 years. I should be. Get it? Until I get old, then I slow down again. Don't worry. It's just a total, hun. Tell me when I can go on. I'm ready. Some people in chat are saying they're ready too. Okay, thanks for telling me. Okay, next, statement of stockholders equity. Well, what do we do here? We started with 79,000 in common stock, 19.7 in retained earnings. We add net income. I think that's the slot for a uh, common stock. We add, okay, we didn't add common stock though. So add net income, thank you. Now, how do we figure out our net income? Don't we go back here and see it's 10-4, right? We add 10-4. Less our dividends. Do we pay any dividends? I don't see that we did, guys. I and I'll just say add common stock. Issuance of common stock, which we didn't. So we've got um, seven, uh, 79, 89, 98, seven. 10, 4, 1, How you guys doing? Hold on for dear life. No, you're not. Yeah, I'm kind of behind that too. I'm lost. Is this making sense, me just taking the time showing you this process? Absolutely. Can I move on? Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. Yes. The balance sheet. The balance sheet is going to have our cash. Basically, it's going to have everything from our 
uh, trial adjusted trial balance here. Okay. Cash 10-3. Accounts receivable 9500. Interest receivable eight hundred, supply seven hundred. We pay rent eighteen hundred. Land seventy eight notes receivable twenty. Statement of stockholders equity. I can see common stock of 79, retained earnings of 30,100. I got that from the ending balance of the statement of stockholders equity. Accounts payable 7,700, salaries payable 2,100, deferred revenue two. Accounts payable, salaries payable, deferred revenue. Twenty-seven, twenty-one, two. Whoops. Twenty-seven, twenty-one, two. Two. You tell me when to move on.
All right, I'm good. I'm good too. Next. Now they want us to prepare closing entries to close out the revenue accounts, the expense accounts, and the dividend accounts. So we can go to our income statement, or we can actually just go to our adjusted trial balance. We're gonna close out our revenue accounts, 45, five and eight. Close that into retained earnings. Okay. So you okay. just have to make it okay. Let me go back here. I'm sorry. Then to close out our expense accounts, we're going to close out salaries. Excuse me, I got to go down here. Salaries, rent, supplies, and utilities. Y'all remember what the salaries were? Twenty six six, rent fifty four hundred. That's two. Yes. Thirteen and twenty six hundred. Thirty-five thousand. That's five nine hundred. Thank you. Thirty-five thousand nine hundred. Yes. Thank you. Then we need to close out the dividends. The dividends were how much, guys? Oh, okay. we, we didn't have any. Now they want us to do a post-closing trial balance. This post-closing trial balance will have everything that are, is in the balance sheet. So it's going to have everything here. Cash, accounts receivable, interest receivable, cash accounts receivable, interest receivable, supplies receivable. Let me just... Cash. Oops. Cash. Accounts receivable. Interest receivable. Supplies. Prepaid rent. What's next? Land. Land. Notes. Pay. Notes receivable. 
Right or notes payable? Uh, notes receivable. For 20? Yes. And how much was the land? 78,000. Can you tell me the cash, guys? 10,300. Accounts receivable? 9,500. Interest receivable, 900. Supplies? 700. Prepaid paid rent? 1,800. Okay. Now we'll have to go to payables. Or, excuse me, payables. What are our payables? Accounts payable? Um, yes. Okay. How much? Um, 7,700. Okay. What's next? Salaries. Okay. How much? 2,100. Okay. Next? Utilities. 200. Okay. Um, the fair revenue. Okay. 2,000. Okay. Uh, common stock. Okay. 79,000. Retain earnings. Yep. 30,100. And the interest receivable, it's 800. Thank you. You see, we balance, guys. Thanks to the interest receivable of 800, I would have been pulling my hair out. Why? Why what? I I think I think I know why. Never mind. I was going to ask why uh, common stock and retained earnings were on that side. Because they are owner, stockholders' equity accounts, and they're on the right side of the accounting equation. Therefore, they have a normal credit balance. Okay. Now... I hate you're going to do another one of these, but do you understand this is how you learn? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guys, if it was easy, honey, I tell you what, I wouldn't make you guys do all this, but that's how you learn is you go through problem after problem to learn. Let me go back here and just see where we're at in yeah, that was the homework here. So we pretty much covered everything. I wish I could learn in an easier format, but it just doesn't work. Okay, it just doesn't work. This is the best way to learn. Now I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna give you some help so you're not overwhelmed. So we went through this problem, okay? Now, this problem is like what we just went over, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you, okay? I want you to know the trial balance. This is, the trial balance, you got three. You've got an unadjusted trial balance before you do your adjusting entries. I want you to take a picture of this or write down the total debits should be 1055. The total credits are 1055. 
okay? This is when you start the year with the, these figures, and these are the various transactions you're going to say. After you complete these transactions, here is your unadjusted trial balance. Then they're going to ask you to create these adjusting entries. Accrued salaries at year end amount to 19.6. Depreciation on equipment is five and office supplies remaining is 1,200. After you create those journal entries, then you have what's called an adjusted trial balance. The adjusted trial balance is right here. So what we're doing is we're entering those where it says requirement on the first tab and then exactly it'll we'll switch it over to adjusted when we've done that. It, that it will flow it for you. It's just gonna it's gonna move you to I'm in the instructor section right now, so you're seeing it but you'll oh, okay. do the journal entries. Then the general ledger, you know, will automatically compute. What happens different with this problem is when you create your journal entries, it will automatically make this so you don't have to, okay? Then it will automatically make these because you see these marks show, it's gonna just do it for you but I want you to know what the numbers should be so you're not off. Okay. So you're not gonna have to do what we did and fill everything in. You're gonna have to create these journal entries and it will do it for you, okay? But I want you to know this is what it should be, okay? Because your income statement, do you see these will automatically happen as long as your adjusted trial balance is correct? Take a picture of this with your phone, guys. Best way to do it. Then... Um, you've got let's just see here. Here's another one. Again, you're not going to have to fill it all in. You're going to have to create your journal entries and then all this will happen for you. Okay. But what I want you to do guys is attempt these. You can go into the discussion and you can say, hey, I'm help, I need help. And people can post, you know, the answers here. I find the only way to learn this stuff is to do this. So I'm going to turn off the microphone.